Welcome to our presentation. A question that has to be asked is hyperbaric oxygen therapy a valid adjunct to allopathic treatments? In 2005, the prestigious British medical journal, The Lancet, actually made the comment that Borrelia burgdorferi, which is the technical name for Lyme disease, is one of the most invasive and elusive bacteria known to man. The BB symptoms are so often misdiagnosed because Lyme disease mimics many other very serious illnesses. Almost all of the patients that have come to the hearing chambers centers have been diagnosed at one time or another with multiple sclerosis, Lou Gehrig's disease, uh, and sometimes Parkinson's disease. Almost all of the patients will admit to the fact that they are having mental problems. It doesn't mean they're nutty. It just means that they've got little uh, cystic things going on in their head, and so they get lost. They become confused. They can be, get very angry at times, and they have uh, problems with controlling the tempers. So, that's okay. You're going to get better. The Borrelia bug is very interesting. Here it is, 400 times magnified. It just winds and winds and corkscrews through the human body. It just cannot help itself. That's why it is called a spiro, as in spiral, a spiro key. Why is it so dangerous? Well, particularly because it's got so many functioning genes and it has so many plasmids. What is a plasmid? We really need to go back to the Lancet and read what they say about it, why it is so dangerous. With more than 1,500 gene sequences, B. Bergdorferi contain at least 132 functioning genes. By comparison, the spiroketal agent of syphilis contains only 22 such genes. Furthermore, the Lyme disease spirochete contains 21 plasmids, 9 circular and 12 linear. This is by far the largest number of plasmids found in any known bacterium. Gene exchange and plasmid transfers among Borrelia strains can also increase the pathogenicity of the organism. We'll show you why. Bacteria typically have a very uh, simple DNA strand within them. And they have very few plasmids. So when they actually replicate, and you're looking at the top of the line there, those three guys, they actually produce identical copies of themselves. They're short-lived. Why does Lyme disease stay so long in people, 10, 20 years? Because it has the plasmids. A plasmid is essentially like a little blueprint. And when the spirochete comes under attack, say with a new antibiotic, what will happen during replication, this plasmid will actually alter the DNA or genetic structure. And uh, the next batch of uh, Lyme spirochete that are going to live in you are going to be different. In short, you're having mutations of this bug. And last and last. We know this because the symptoms come back after an apparent treatment success with a new antibiotic. The patient gets all of these things back again and becomes very sad thinking there are no other or treatment alternatives. So that's the question. Are there? If your symptoms come back, what are you going to do? Go back on a different antibiotic? Well, of interest, two doctors, a father and daughter, did a pilot trial at Texas A&M. And they reported in this pilot trial, to date, there have been four double-blinded randomized control trials of antibiotic therapy. Read what's in the red. Unfortunately, no trial has demonstrated a sustained improved benefit. 
or other potentially adverse events have occurred. So is there something else that we could try? Well, the father and daughter scientific detective team actually found 91 patients and in a six year pilot study with hyperbarics they took these 91 patients put them in a hyperbaric chamber twice a day for 20 days. 91 subjects, 84% of them, said they felt significant improvement at the end of 20 days. 12% of them, about 10 of the patients, said they felt nothing. Now, 90 of these patients had a severe jarish herxheimer or what the Lyme patients called herxing, a severe during the trial, which means that once you start hyperbarics, you are going to feel awful. However, in the follow-up, and we've found this ourselves when patients come back, and they'll call us and they say, I'm just so well. 70% continue to improve at their six-year follow-up. The doctors concluded, it does seem clear that hyperbaric oxygen therapy improves or eliminates the symptoms in patients who have been treated with antibiotics for several years and have shown no further mitigation of disease symptomology. This is very important that you read the title. Lyme disease is an unproven indication for hyperbaric oxygen therapy. If you went to the hospital, they would not treat you for Lyme disease, and your insurance company will not pay for it. Most of our patients arrive either not walking, can't get up the steps, but they leave very different than when they first arrived. We're going to look at this uh, a pretty girl, the cheerleader, up on the top stack here. This is Megan. And uh, Megan, shortly after this photograph was taken, of this very athletic, vibrant girl, she was written by a tech and she spent six years in bed and couldn't even walk upstairs. Right now. So just tell me how you feel into that, because we really haven't had a chance to to do this today. Today's a painful day. Had a lot of back pain. Hurt me again right now. We're, we're expecting days like this, though, aren't we, honey? Go ahead and you want to say anything? No. Just, this is day what? Day number six? Day six. So we were expecting the hurts to set in. They said that it definitely would with every Lyme patient they've had that it did. So I know it's really surprised, but we're just continually praying for the miracle that we know we're going to get. So even though we're having a bad day, we're still right hurts. Today is Friday. It was my 27th treatment and things are going really, really good. <laughs> um, I have a really bad headache right now, but it's, other than that, I feel really, really tell, I feel great. Tell them about the patch, too. Now comes the interesting thing about it, this not being a, uh, put in words, proven uh, malady for hyperbaric oxygen therapy. The approved maladies by the Undersea Hyperbaric Medicine Society over many years of justification are only 14 in the United States. In the rest of the world, they treat up to 80 different maladies in hyperbaric chambers. The UHMS well, these folk are good scientists, but they're not a regulating body. They just give an opinion to Medicare and insurance payers, just as the IDSA gives its opinion, and then decisions are made as to whether 
Taifa. It's interesting. Professor Christensen recently wrote a book called The Innovator's Prescription. He said, when a disruptive technological enabler emerges, the leaders in the industry disparage and discourage it. Regulators must be aware, therefore, of the attempts of leading institutions to outlaw the business model of innovation. What is in the interests of society most often does not coincide with the self-perceived interests of the leading institutions. Therefore, physicians can prescribe anything for anything, so long as they are a registered medical practitioner in that state. Off-label use of drugs is common. He went on, this Harvard professor, to say medical procedures should be taken out of the hands of physicians and delivered outpatient at pharmacies and non-hospital settings since many procedures are processes rather than medical art. Essentially, Healing Chambers International and other freestanding hospital quality centers charge one-tenth of what hospitals charge, a lower cost environment. It is a process. Essentially, Healing Chambers International will fill any prescription by an MD or doctor of osteopathy and we do so at one tenth around about cost of a hospital 90 minute treatment. There are regulations from the FDA about hospital quality. If the chambers such as ours have a 5 uh, 10k period for marketing from the FDA, you are not allowed to promote that chamber for anything other than these 14 approved maladies. However, off-label use of the chambers to administer oxygen is in itself lawful if prescribed by a registered physician. You must have a doctor's prescription to be treated in a chamber for Lyme disease. We'd like you to have a look at our second portion of How Hyperbaric Works. You can learn a lot more by going on our hboinfo.com site. Of note, Healing Palms Oxygen Institute is now owned and operated by Megan's family. They're so excited about it. My name is Bob Sands and before I leave you, we'll have some acknowledgements. But in the acknowledgements, we point out that use of any name, insignia, quotation does not imply the endorsement of the organization or that person who is named. And the use of images and comments of patients who offer their testimonials are just that. They are the positive results of their own experience and they cannot be considered as a promotion for the use of hyperbarics. This is a personal decision of these individuals. Again, my name is Bob Sands or full name is Robert Line Sands. Thank you for paying attention.